Hi, everybody. Welcome in. It is so good to see you. Happy Tuesday to all of you. I hope you're having a great week so far. I know the week's just getting started, but hopefully it's it started on the right foot. And if it didn't, maybe I can inspire you, make you smile a little this Tuesday afternoon. I hope, like I said, I hope it's going well. It's really cloudy here. So, you know, it's like when it gets really cloudy like that, you know that it's going to rain eventually. It's not supposed to start raining until later and it's going to rain most of the day tomorrow. But are you, are you in the same boat as me? Like when it gets cloudy, I just want to take a nap. <laughs> it's like it zaps all of the, it doesn't matter that I had like 12 hours of sleep last night. Like I got a full night's sleep, but I wake up, the day starts out, it's sunny, it looks okay. Right. And the clouds start rolling in. And like, as the cloud cover starts, my energy just goes down the tubes. Like what? Come on. I got a lot of rest. I think it's all in our head, but yeah. So it's not sunny and pretty here, but the temperature is a little, a little warmer, a little bit, a tiny, tiny bit, which is weird because two days ago it was sleeting outside. There was ice. I <laughs> don't get it. This is such a weird place to live. So anyway, I hope wherever you are, the weather is being kind to you and not zapping all your energy. Hi, Wanda. Hi, Gina. Hi, Judy. It's so good to see you guys. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Susie. All right. So you guys, I'm going to hopefully cheer us up a little bit. If it's cloudy where you are, maybe this little design will help bring in some sunshine. So listen, my daughter was with me this past weekend and she is a budding jewelry maker herself. And I say budding, but quite honestly, she is already very, very good at what she does. And I feel a sneeze coming on. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> My apologies. She does a lot of things with pony beads, which for her age group is fine. Um, she is a, a teenager and they don't, they don't care that pony beads are made out of plastic. They could care less. They want fun, colorful, big designs. So they use the pony beads to achieve that, that goal. Well, what's fascinating to me about it is, is that she uses pony beads in the same way that, that we use seed beads. She can do peyote with those big pony beads and create anything you can think of. She's made purses. She's made, she made a tie, like a necktie. She's made bags. She's made wall art. She's made a gazillion bracelets. And it's just really intriguing to me. However, she is intrigued by the seed beads. And she's like, I love seed bead designs. They're very pretty. They're very small. They're very dainty and feminine. And mom, can you please make me something? And I'm like, you know what? You can do this with the pony beads. And she was like, no, no, no. I know I can do this with the pony beads, but I really want the look of the seed beads. Can you do it for me? And I said, of course I can, right? Of course I can. But you can do this yourself. No, 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 no. She's intimidated. She's intimidated by the tiny beads. And I totally get it. Seed beads and I have a love-hate relationship. So I can totally understand that those little seed beads can be a, a big source of anxiety, uh, particularly for somebody who's been using this those big pony beads, which are, you know, it's essentially like a four millimeter bead. It's a big bead. Dorothy wants to know how old she is. She is 14 and um, just barely. She turned 14 last month. And <clears throat> so she asked me to make this design for her. And um, I, I did. And when I originally did it, I did it with wildfire and a beading needle. And, and I used a wire guardian and like I wanted it to be a really good design. Well, while I was doing it, I was thinking, you know, I think I could probably do this with silk cord. And turns out you absolutely can. Not only can you do this with silk cord, you could do it with s -Lon, you could do it with B-Lon, you could do it with a lot of things. But I like the, the silk cord because it has a needle on the end. But not only that, but I can make it adjustable. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, this is not a super hard design. This is most definitely a design that has been around for a million years. Um, however, there are some things about it that people tend to change um, and make it suit themselves and that's okay. So if you've seen this design before, 
Let this just be a little refresher for you. If you've not seen this design before, let me remind you that some of your customers are young people. And it is really difficult in this industry to reach young people because a lot of times as designers, we get stuck in a box, right? We get stuck in a box and we, we like a certain thing. I'm really bad about this. Like I love wire designs and anything that sparkles. I don't use a ton of gemstones, but give me crystals and I'm a happy person. But a 14 year old doesn't want to wear a bunch of crystals. They don't want sparkly, jangly jewelry. They want simple styles or bold, colorful looks. As designers, I think it would be, an, uh, we're doing ourselves a disservice by not keeping up with what the younger people are interested in because even though some of them don't have jobs their parents do <laughs> and they definitely want to buy things that are handmade they have this whole love of handmade things but a lot of the jewelry that is available to them for purchase is made by other 14 year olds and so the quality is not that great we can do them a great service by creating these pieces for them that they love that are done in a professional way so just keep that in mind as we're putting this design together now i'm not saying this design is strictly for 14 year olds i actually love a daisy chain of any variety and i think it's beautiful for anybody for springtime i just wanted to kind of put that little bug in your ear to be thinking because i know a lot of you are gearing up for spring shows sometimes there are parents in that crowd who are shopping for a younger generation sometimes there's a younger generation in that crowd shopping with their allowance so keep that in mind when you are creating your designs not all customers are created equal so all right, I'm going to get you guys turned around and we are going to get started. All right, so let me show you what we're going to be using. Let me show you the sample first for those of you who maybe didn't see the picture. So we're just creating a simple beaded daisy chain with some seed beads here. I'm using some Toho beads, so I'm using really nice quality seed beads. And I'm using silk cord for this. And I'm going to create it so that it can be adjustable, which is really nice, particularly mm -hmm. if you are, my goodness, my dog is doing a reverse sneeze right now. Uh, if you are going to be making things for a booth, right? Adjustable is nice because not all customers wear the same sizes. So I'm going to show you how to put this together. Easy peasy. We're going to be using some silk cord for this. And <clears throat> I'm actually using number two. I think I'm going to grab a thicker silk cord. So if you'll give me just a second to grab that. I'm also using some Toho, which I mentioned I'm using some Toho beads that I got from the Art Beads website. Now, I don't have my affiliate link ready just yet, but please don't let that stop you from going over and checking out all of the amazing seed beads that are available on the Art Beads website. Let me grab my silk cord. Um, the amount of seed beads and colors and styles that are available, I'm talking so many seed beads, it's hard to decide which ones you want. But I picked out these three colors Actually, my daughter picked out these three colors. We've got like a minty green, a beautiful sunny yellow, and just a white. And let me grab some cord here. Let's see. I'm going to use a number six for this. So I had been using, like I mentioned, I had been using a size two, which is fine. But I think one of the problems that I was having with the size two is that the knot was not quite big enough to keep the seed beads from slipping past the knot. So I'm gonna go up a size. Now, feel free to use whatever size you want to because my seed beads are a size eight. You might be using a size six, you might be using a 15, you might be using an 11. You're gonna need your silk cord to kind of match that um, as far as your knot is concerned. So you may not need six, two might be perfect. But, Go ahead and take this off of the card and I'm going to move this two out of the way. Now, this is a pretty simple little design, but such a cute one. It really is just a soft, pretty spring design that you could change up by changing up the colors. I saw this thing on TikTok last night. <laughs> I, I, I'm all about TikTok. I watch TikTok nonstop. And um, one of the TikToks that came across, I'm going to stretch my cord just a little bit, um, was this mom. And she was like, 
you know, she she was just a regular, average, everyday <laughs> person. You know, she didn't look like a goth mom by any stretch of the imagination. She just looked like regular mom next door, you know. And she was like, I have a 10-year-old. My 10-year-old is goth. And she was like, but I like really sweet girly things. And so it's really difficult for me to, um, to, to get her sweet girly things when she loves everything that's red and black and vampire looking. And, and she had showed up a, a bracelet that she had made. Right. And she was like, I, she showed the original, which was in beautiful pastels, sort of like what we're using today. And, <laughs> and she was like, I, I love this design and had changed this up for my daughter because she's goth and she created the exact same bracelet, but did it in black and red. And it had little flowers in it. Like it was still sweet, but it was black and red. And I was like, that's, that's the kind of mom I strive to be. Like if my kid comes to me and she's like, I'm going to be goth now. By golly, I'm going to take this sweet little daisy chain and I'm going to turn those into little black flowers with red centers. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, I, I really, I thought that was cute. I was like, I love that. I love that. All right. So I'm going to dump out some of my seed beads here because it is going to take a few. All right. Because, you know, not all young people are created equal. Not all young people like soft pastel colors. Some of them are little punk rockers in training like I was when I was that age. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take my cord here and I'm down here towards the end and I'm going to do a overhanded knot and I'm going to do a surgeon's knot, right? I would be jumping for joy if my kid was like, I'm goth, which she pretty much is. She's she's a weird kind of hybrid. She's like a little, a little hippie goth. She loves sweet feminine things, but she's also like a metal head so it's kind of weird it's a it's a strange combination but i'm not mad about it whatever <laughs> okay so this is my knot now listen one of the things that i didn't tell you is that you want to leave yourself several inches on the end of your cord you don't need nearly as many as i have here this is probably 10 10 inches of cord you really only need to leave yourself about four or five inches because we're going to use that for that adjustable section. So just make sure that when you tie your knot at the end that you're leaving yourself enough room to do the adjustable section of your bracelet. All right. <clears throat> so now for the pattern, this is super easy. We're going to take our needle end here and we are going to pick up three green Okay, now this is the this is the section in between the flowers that we are we're picking up right now. So three green, a yellow, and three more green. And you can adjust this. If you want your flowers to be closer together, then obviously you're gonna use less beads here. So three green, a yellow, three more green. Okay, and then we are going to drop those down, bring those all the way down here to our knot. Okay, now we're going to pick up beads for our flower, but our flower is made up of six white seed beads in a yellow center, but we're going to pick this up in kind of a weird way. This is the part where people get kind of thrown off. We're going to pick up four white seed beads. These are the flower, these are the petals. So whatever color you're going to use for your petals and one yellow seed bead and we're going to drop that down okay all right now we're going to take our needle and we're going to go back to the very first white seed bead that we picked up and we're going to take our needle back through that seed bead going in the direction of the knot that we created so we're going back this direction okay you're going to pull and you want to pull all that down nice and tight now it's going to be this weird little shape right doesn't look like much at the moment Okay, now you're going to pick up two white seed beads, one, two, and you're going to take your needle back through 
the seed bead that is directly next to your yellow. So this one right here, and you're going in the other direction. So before when we took our needle through a bead, we went that way. Now we're going this way. And if this is confusing, that's okay. You're gonna to get to see it again several, several times. And then we're gonna pull. And when we pull, I would wear this bracelet too, 100%. When we pull, it's gonna turn it into a cute little flower. Now it's not a perfect flower by any stretch of the imagination, but I mean, it's a flower, <laughs> right? It is in fact a flower. And of course the tighter that you pull, the more that flower shape is gonna be. So definitely wanna use some tension in your design, but the tighter you pull this, the more obvious the flower is gonna be, okay? All right, now we're going to do our little space in between again. So we are going to pick up three green, okay? And then one yellow and three green, one, two, and three. Okay. And we are going to pull all that down right up against our flower. Okay. And then we're going to move on to the flower. And again, the pattern is exactly the same. Four seed beads that are your petal colors. So white for us, one, two, three, and four and then a yellow for the center. And, ooh, I love that idea, Nancy. An anklet would be so pretty. I love that. And I love these soft colors that she picked out. It's such a, it's such a difference from the bold, bright colors of the pony beads, because she does a lot of jewelry that is, is like rainbow colored. Like, and when I mean, I mean like, you know, like from the, like the classics, like classic yellow and classic green and bright orange and, you know, fire engine red, like those colors are the ones that she uses. So when she picked out the soft color palette, I was like, wow, that's so pretty. <laughs> All right. Taking the needle and that first white seed bead that we put on right here, we're going to take our needle and we're going through that bead back through that bead going to the left. Yeah, I made hers into a, a choker bonnie. It was so pretty. So the one that she got was not a bracelet. It was a necklace. And she made a stretch necklace on elasticity to go with it, which was in the same kind of soft colors. All right, now picking up two more of the petal beads. So two more white. Okay, and then when we pick up our design, look at it. We're gonna take our needle back through. Gosh, I wish I could hold things straight. That would be helpful. All right, we're gonna take our needle through the seed bead that is directly next to our center yellow, right? So we're going through this seed bead right here to the right. Yes, Nicole says, age is just a number. Continue to do all the things that make you happy. 100%. 100%. Uh-oh. Looks like I've got kind of a twisty mess here. Hold on. Nope, that all worked out. <laughs> I like it when that happens. There's our little flower. All right. We're going to pick up another three green. and a yellow, and three green. <laughs> okay, and then we're gonna pick up our flower beads. So four white, one, two, three, four, and a yellow. And drop that down. We won't tell on you, Lynn. <laughs> All right, now, 
taking your needle. The silk is kind of slippery. I'm not, not going to lie. Taking the needle through that white seed bead that was the first one that we added in this little section and going towards the left. And pull. Okay. And then picking up two more white seed beads. And then we're gonna take our needle through the seed bead directly next to our yellow, going towards the right. And pull. And again, use good tension on this. Oh, Marilyn, that is what I want to hear right there. Marilyn says, I am seed bead avoidant, but this cute pattern makes me want to try again. I am the same. I'm not seed bead avoidant. Okay. I just don't do a lot of live projects with seed beads because I get frustrated very easily. I love to seed bead. And if I can do it in the comfort and quietness of my own shop without or studio without, you know, worrying that anybody else is watching what I'm doing. That's totally different. I'm just not super comfortable teaching it. Um, so I leave it up to other people to teach. But um, I was like you for a long time. I was really intimidated by the little tiny seed beads, even though my very first um, introduction to jewelry was seed beads. But they co-mingle. They're tiny. They fall in the floor. <sighs> they're hard to see sometimes. Like there are so many reasons that I don't like seed beads. But then when I look at the pieces that I've made and other people have made, I'm like, gosh, but the designs are so beautiful. So I encourage you to give it a shot. This is a little bit different because we're using silk cord that's already got a needle on it. So this is definitely a good, like, give it a try again kind of project, you know, because you've got a cord that already has a needle. It's a thick cord. You don't have to worry about any of those things. And the pattern is pretty simple. So Maybe you'll fall in love with seed beads. You never know. You never know. All right. So I did my three green, my yellow, my three green, picking up four of the white, one yellow, dropping those down. Okay. And then I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to take my needle through back through that first white seed bead in this little section going to the left and pull and I want to be sure that you see this for all of you who've never done this before that you see what this looks like when you go back through so that you don't think that you've made some sort of mistake it doesn't look like much of anything <laughs> If you're like, well, how's that going to be a flower? You have to follow through with the next step because it really just doesn't look like much of anything. So um, you're not doing it wrong at this point. Just go ahead on to the next step, which is picking up two more seed beads. Okay. And then you're going to go through the seed bead that is right next to the yellow. So there's our yellow. We're going to go through this one right here out towards the right and pull. Yes, Wanda. Seed beading in the privacy of your own home allows you to freely use all freely use all the ne necessary sentence enhancers. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Again, which is why I don't teach it very often because the sentence enhancers will fly. All right. I'm going to pick up another set of green. So one, two, three, a yellow. And three more green. One, two, and three. Okay. <laughs> Ginger. <laughs> okay. And we're going to pick up four of the white. And one yellow. Drop those down. Dorothy, she says she's never done a seed bead project, but she thinks she'll try this one. Yes, 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 yes. That's what I'm saying. All right. So now we're going to take that needle and we're going to go back through this first white seed bead, 
going in the opposite direction and pull. Oh, Pamela, I love that idea. Pamela said that these would be perfect inside Easter eggs. I love that idea. I really, really do. I think that's wonderful. All right, now we're going to pick up two more white. And then going through the white seed bead directly next to the yellow, going out towards the right. And sometimes your silk cord gets a little, because it's twisted cord, so it naturally kind of wants to do its own thing. So you do have to kind of keep an eye on it and keep it under control. And be sure, like I said, you're using good tension on this. So you're pulling nice and tight. You don't want these to be super loose, okay? All right, now <clears throat> we're gonna take a look at the sample and we're gonna be looking at how many of the little flowers we created. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we've done one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to do two more sections of flowers and then we are going to finish this off. So let's go ahead, picking up the green. So three green, one yellow, three green. Okay, dropping those down. Oh my goodness, yeah. Another day jewelry, etc. says they would be pretty dangles on kitchen curtains too. I love that idea. I love that. All right, four white seed beads and a yellow. Okay, drop those down. Okay, now we're going to take our needle, that first white seed bead that we added, we're going to go back through it in the opposite direction to the left with our needle and pull. Ooh, as the tie backs, so that would be really pretty too. My groceries just got delivered and I'm so hungry. I cannot wait to go make a sandwich. <laughs> I'm out of everything. You ever get down to those days where you're just like, okay, well, my choices are um, a scoop of peanut butter on a spoon. Like, you know, you put your grocery shopping off for so long because you just hate it. I hate grocery shopping. And I broke down this morning and I was like, okay, I need, I have to get groceries, but I have lives today. So I'm going to have to have them delivered. I can have a real sandwich today. I'm so excited. <laughs> I don't want you people thinking I'm starving over here, but you know, I put off my grocery shopping for long enough and I just had groceries delivered and I'm like, mm -hmm. a ham sandwich coming up. All right. Now we're going to take this needle back through the first seed bead next to our center yellow going to the right. <laughs> Ginger says, let your needle drop and the cord may untangle. It will, but it's, it's so, it's so, so much cord. <laughs> I'm using a fresh silk cord. So there's so much of it. And if I let it dangle, there is a, uh, there's a little four legged creature underneath this desk that may not let me have it back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nancy says that's the day you make the meal from the odds and ends exactly well I've been getting in the habit this is such a bad habit all right we're doing the middle section again so three greens I've been getting in the habit of just grocery shopping like the day of you know what I mean like okay well tonight I want you know I want spaghetti tonight so then I'll go to the store and just get what I need for the night instead of you know stocking up the pantry like I normally do and that works all well and good, except for when you're really, really lazy and you don't want to go to the store for the day, you know, and then you're down to like a, a spoonful of peanut butter and, you know, some fruit snacks. <laughs> it's like, okay, okay. It's time to actually grocery shop again. Okay. So now picking up 
four. This is our last flower. So four white seeds and a yellow. I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> is that four-legged creature named Vega? Yeah, actually Vega and Cora are under the desk. And Cora would be the first one to grab it. Because that's her favorite thing to do is to grab whatever she can from the desk, you know. All right, so taking our needle, so last flower, going to that first white bead that we added in this section, and I'm going back through it with my needle and thread towards the left and pull. Hi, Shaquisha. All right, make sure you're pulling. It's in good tension is important here, okay? And then two more white seed beads. And then going through the, the bead directly next to our center yellow to the right. Susie says she lives in the boonies where she can't even get pizza delivered. Groceries would be amazing. Listen, when we first moved out here, we couldn't get anything delivered. So we've come a long way. <laughs> Now you can get groceries delivered here and there's a couple of fast food places that you can get delivered. Um, but it used to be like that for us too. You could not have anything delivered out here, which is a really hard adjustment for me. Cause I love, I love to have things delivered. I work way too much to have to stop and go to the grocery store, you know? All right. We're going to finish off with one of the green sections and then we're going to tie a knot. So there's three green, one yellow, and three more green. And we're going to drop that down. Okay. Now, before we tie our knot, we want to go back through here and kind of zhuzh a little. We want to be sure that, like, we don't have anything super loose. And if we do, we need to kind of tighten up by cinching up the tension. Okay. All right, then we're gonna tie an overhanded knot and I'm gonna do a double. So I'm doing a surgeon's knot and I'm actually gonna cut some of this cord off before I tie that because that's a lot of cord. And I still have plenty with my needle on the end, so I can save this for something else. I'm going to set this to the side. Don't throw that away. Save it for something else. All right, now I'm going to tie an overhanded knot, and I'm going to make it a surgeon's knot by looping through twice. And then I'm actually going to bring in my beading all, just so that when I pull this knot down, I know that it's going to be nice and tight. There we go. Okay, so now if you want, you can go ahead and clean up your seed beads, which I want because I don't like it when they commingle and the green gets in the yellow and the yellow gets in the white. And then when I have to go to clean them up, I have to separate them all. That's why I don't like seed beads. <laughs> no commingling of the colors. I don't want to pick through. Okay. <laughs> Last ones are the yellow. Okay. Now, <laughs> Wanda says, I love making surgeon's knots. Makes me feel like I'm a highly skilled doctor without any actual medical training. <laughs> okay. So now what we're going to do is we are going to create our adjustable section with some square knots using some Eslon. And I'm using some Eslon in a nice pretty peach color, though white would have been fine or green or yellow. I just wanted something a little bit different. So I went with the peach just because I thought it was a nice choice to go with this. You're going to need about 12 inches of this. And I'm going to use my tying station to make my life a little bit easier here as I do this. So what we want to do is we want to take our two threads before I attach this to the tying station. And you want those two threads to go, be going in opposite directions, right? 
running parallel to each other, just in opposite directions. And then we're going to do the square knots over the top of these. And then we'll be able to pull the ends to make it adjustable. Well, the issue is, is that this silk is super slippery and I don't want it to move around on me too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide part of it underneath the tying station here on the top. And then on this side, I'm going to slide up the bottom part of my tying station because, you know, that whole bottom thing is adjustable. And I'm going to slide that underneath here and kind of cinch this down. Now, it does make it kind of difficult because you're working in a really small, small space. If you don't want to use your tying station, get some painter's tape, tape this down or whatever you need to do. But now I can get in there with my Eslon. So I'm going to take my Eslon and I'm going to go underneath those two cords and I need to find the middle. So I'm bring my two ends together. Okay. And then we're going to do our square knots. The first square knot is always the trickiest because it's not attached to anything. So we're doing our P shape on the right, going over the top of our core, which is our two cords here, okay? Like I said, first one's always the trickiest because everything wants to move around on you. Then I'm gonna take my left cord, cross over, going behind and up through that P-shape. And I'm going to use pliers because I can to grab that. And pull okay and then we got to do the second step of that which is our P shape on the left so our Q right cord crosses over that goes behind and up through that backwards P shape and then pull okay we'll lower you down a little bit here all right, now the trick here is that you wanna pull these down and make these nice secure knots, but you don't wanna pull them so, so tightly that you can't adjust, right? These cords that are inside still need to be able to slip slide in between there. So that first knot, pull it down nice and secure, but don't like, you know, don't, don't tie it up tight like you're cinching up a garbage bag. You wanna be sure that it's a secure knot, but not so, so secure that you can't move things. All right, P shape on the right, left cord crossing over my goodness going over and behind and up through using my pliers because like i said this is a small little area okay and then pull and then our backwards p shape right cord crosses over goes behind and up through. <laughs> Darn it. Somebody said to get the naughty, the naughty board out. I think I might get the naughty board out. I really just wanted to be able to do this quick and easy on the tying station, which I can, but not without using my pliers. <laughs> and pull. <laughs> And actually, now that I've got this kind of secure, I can actually take this off, to be completely honest with you. Okay. Now, I actually don't even need to use anything at all because I've got this nice and secure. Everything's fine. All right. P-shape. Oh, this is where things get a little tricky. P-shape on the right. Left cord crosses over that goes behind and up through. The reason this is tricky is because it's harder to see when I just hold it in my hand instead of having it attached to anything. And, <laughs> and pull. <laughs> Who's ready for me to get the naughty board out? I am. I am. Okay, let me grab it. It's on my feet. <laughs> There's no reason that we should be struggling here. So we're not going to struggle anymore. We're going to use our naughty board. Oh gosh. And I just pulled the, hold on. Sorry. I'm hope I'm not making you too seasick. I just grabbed the tripod when I stood up. Hold on. 
reset you. I apologize, guys. Sorry about that. All right. Naughty board coming in. This will solve all the problems. <laughs> all right. I love the naughty board. I just never think about grabbing it, and I should because it's so convenient. There we go. Okay. Now, I did the P shape on the right, but I didn't finish that knot off. So I'm going to do the left backwards P shape, right cord crosses over, goes behind and up through. This is so much easier because I can get my fingers underneath there. <laughs> Okay, P shape on the right, left cord crosses over, goes behind and up through, pull. P shape on the left, or our backwards P shape rather, right cord crosses over that, goes behind and up through. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to do 10 of these knots. It's up to you as to how many of the knots you want to make. But let's count one, two, three, four. So I've only done four. We're going to do six more. Catherine says, can you make this with wire? You absolutely can. So you can make this design, this exact design, using very, very thin, thin artistic wire. So if you wanted to do the daisy chain and have it have a little bit more structure, you could do this with, uh, I would say, 26 gauge or smaller. I think 28 would probably be your best bet. Um, but you can definitely use very thin gauge wire to create the exact same daisy pattern and it will have a little bit of structure to it. Um, I, I find that it's a little more challenging to use artistic wire, but if that is your favorite thing to use, you absolutely can. Absolutely. And then instead of doing this adjustable part, you could, you could just add a clasp, you know, you could do like a, a wrapped loop on the ends, add some jump rings and a clasp. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got three more to go. Okay, P shape. Left cord crosses over it, goes up behind and up through. Pull. Doing your backwards P shape on the left, right cord crosses over that, goes behind and up through. Ooh. Okay, two more. P shape, crosses over, it's behind, through, left, backwards P shape, right core crosses over, behind and up through, and then one more knot for good measure. So our P shape on the right, crosses over, behind and up through, and then Yes, Dorothy says, what about using wildfire? So my original design that I gave my daughter, I used wildfire and I didn't make it adjustable because um, she knew what size she wanted. So instead of using the silk cord, I used wildfire and on the ends, I used wire guardians and attached a clasp to it. Um, I just, as I was doing it that way, I was like, you know what, I bet I could do this with silk cord since it's already got a knot on it and I can make it adjustable. Um, so I originally did it with the wildfire. So any of your beading threads that you want to use, you absolutely can do it that way. Okay, so now I need to cut my ends and I'm going to melt my cord. So I'm going to come in with my cutter tool, which is scissors in this instance, trim off. Okay, and then I'm going to use a lighter and I'm going to melt those ends and just tap that down with your finger. And if you feel like it needs a little extra melting, then give it the extra melting. Just don't set things on fire. I have a tendency to set things on fire, so you just want to melt it and then tap it down with your finger and that's going to keep that in place. Now, I got mine too hot and it browned. Um, if you'll keep your lighter away from it and just kind of get close enough so that the heat starts to melt it, it won't brown your cord. But I also have a fan going, so that's, that's not helpful either. Okay, so now I'm going to take this off of the naughty board. And we're going to finish this up real quick. 
All right, so you take a pull. You can see that's, oh, I got really brown. That's okay. I have others. <laughs> This one doesn't have to go to anybody, though. I'll probably wear it anyway, but I won't, I won't give it away. Okay, so now we need to find a way to make sure that our cords, when we open this up to make this big, right, that the cords don't slip through all of that hard work we just did. So I'm going to put beads on both cords, tie knots, and then that will be that. So I'm going to take a couple more seed beads. I do not, Lisa, the, um, the naughty board, you have to get through the naughty board, the official like naughty web, naughty board website. Um, or I think JTV used to sell them. I don't know for sure. I don't, I don't shop with JTV, but, um, I know that you can get them from the naughty board website. So if you just go to like Google and type in the naughty do it all, it'll bring it up for you. All right, so I'm gonna thread a seed bead onto the end of my cord. And then I'm gonna tie an overhand of knot. Of course, of course, of course. I And I'll tell you, they're a little expensive, but they're so fun and so versatile. I mean, you get a lot of information with your naughty board too and lots of accessories. So, you know, I had the travel one out. That's what I was using, but I have the big one too. There's my knot. And then I'm going to trim off the end. Now, somebody asked me one time when I was making these bracelets, they were like, can you do two knots? One knot on the back side and put the bead in between two knots? Yes, you can. Or alternatively, because there's glue in the materials list today, you can take some hypo cement. Put a little hypo cement on the cord right next to the knot and then slide your bead over the top of it and let it dry and that bead will stay in place. So you can you can either tie it between two knots, you can let it roam free like I do, or you can put a little glue on there. Totally up to you. But the bead also helps because sometimes the knots, as you wear them, they kind of flatten down and they could still sneak in into the inside of the um the square knots that you made, uh, adding a bead to it is definitely a great way to make sure that that never happens. All right, one more seed bead. Which is a little tricky because once you cut your silk cord, then it wants to start to fray. Use a little DNA. Nobody will tell anybody. <laughs> it's a little DNA. Okay. Drop that one down. And then an overhanded knot. Uh, Pamela says, so if you made these as curtain ties, would the length be the same? I don't think so. I think it would really kind of depend on your um, the bulkiness of your curtains. You might need a little bit more. So you probably need to make your, your sections a little bit longer, but I don't know for sure. I don't know. It really just kind of depends. And trim. And we are done. And look how cute that is. Minus where I kind of melted the pink part of my court, but look how cute. Such a sweet little bracelet. You could take it, you could make it into a choker necklace if you wanted to. You could do an ankle bracelet. You could, you could even use size 11 seed beads and make a ring. I mean, 15s. I'm sorry, not 11s. 15s. You know, those are the tiny ones that nobody ever wants to work with because you have to have three magnifying glasses to see them. You 100% <laughs> could. <laughs> You 100% could make rings out of this little design if you wanted to. Lot of options here. And of course, changing up your colors too. If you needed it to be goth, you could do it in black and red and it would be a cute little goth bracelet for your cute, sweet little goth niece, right? <laughs> 
but there you go, guys. It's just a quick, easy little design. I mean, it took us about an hour. It's not super, super quick. It took us about 40-ish minutes. Um, but the more you practice it, of course, the faster you're going to get at it. Um, and you don't have me, like, you know, talking about it as I'm going. So it, it might go a little bit faster. But you definitely can do this with um, wildfire or other beading thread and a needle. You could do this with wire like we talked about. So... A lot of options here. Just a cute little bracelet that you could do uh, with any any size bead that you wanted to. Honestly, you could even do this with crystals that were like two or three millimeters. So you could make this a little bit more chunky if you needed to. All right, I'm going to turn you around. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this little project. This was all thanks to my kiddo who wanted this over the weekend which I did for her and then I was like you know what this would be a great project and a good little reminder to everybody that particularly those of you who have spring shows coming up um, to be sure that you are including your younger crowd in your designs because um, you know they they are a, a big part of our our population and we really want to reach those those people and and a lot of times the best way to reach a potential maker is by putting in front of them something pretty and they go oh i want to learn how to do that that's exactly how it happened with my daughter my daughter she watches tiktok she watches youtubes and she watches me and so you know she kind of gradually kind of came into it and she really kind of has a style of her own but had she not had access to those things, you know, and pieces that I had made for her and given to her, would she have ever been intrigued to learn how to make it herself? I don't know. So, you know. All right, guys, I'm out of here. I do want to let you guys know um, that Hardwired is now open for enrollment. So if you are interested in joining the Hardwired group, which is my paid Facebook group, where we do projects that are a little bit more hard than the ones that we do here. I'm talking upper level beginner, intermediate, and sometimes advanced style projects. However, I don't want that to intimidate you if you are still a beginner because I try to break those projects down and make them accessible to absolutely everybody by breaking them down into bite-sized pieces that everybody can follow along with. And you've got a small community group as your support system. It's just a really fun place and we would absolutely love you to come and join with us. We're actually doing, I do a lot of wire projects there, but we're actually doing a seed bead project there this week. This is our weekly project that we will be doing this afternoon. So if you want to come and be a part of the hardwired, we do things like this. We do, we did macrame last week. We do a lot of wire weaving and wire wrapping, um, but I try to keep it fun and try to make it easy while still helping you to grow your skills. So definitely come and check that out if you want to. You just need to come over to the um, the Facebook group and apply to be a member. Make sure that you answer the questions. If it doesn't ask you questions, reapply because Facebook is weird like that. So we would love to have you. All right, that being said, Hardwired, we are meeting at 4 p.m. Eastern this afternoon. So don't forget to set your reminders for that. Everybody else, I'll be back with you on Friday at 1 p.m. for our Feel Good Friday show. I have absolutely no idea what the kits are going to be this week, but I'm sure there'll be something fun. Don't want to miss that. So set your reminders for that as well as 4 p.m. Eastern on Friday afternoon for my Art Beats Live as well. Until then, I hope you have an amazing rest of your week. I'm going to go make a sandwich and I will see you soon. Bye, guys.